Hello, this is Kira. I am here today with Jafri Oswald, a, a very honored guest. Jafri has been writing and um, coaching me a little bit. I'm still diving into that, but the writings have been amazing, huge gift for me. And I wanted to bring him today into this world to help deliver this one particular message that speaks to what I call expansive transcendence, meaning it takes what we thought was transcendence to the next level. And it's the fourth side of the coin. It is something that I read and thought, I have to help get this message out. So even if it's just to my little group, I wanna start this process. And so I thought there were only two sides to a coin, Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then he taught me in this writing about the third side. And I thought, wow, that's what I've been trying to do for some time and working at uh, vociferously. Yeah. Yet there's a fourth side. So I'm going to yeah. turn the floor over to you to help explain what the fourth side and everything is, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess the first place to start is, um, you know, what is the third side of the coin? which most people don't see it, but yeah, it's the edge between the opposite sides, the, the good and the bad, you know, the light and the dark, the male and female. Um, and I like to take it more to a personal level, like sometimes our ego, you know, gets involved with our spiritual progress or manifesting what we want in life. And so we play these games of I'm inferior or I'm superior. And so we get caught in playing that I'm less than, I'm nobody, I, I can't do this life, or I'm on top of it all, right? So the, the third side of the coin is this middle edge where the ego can't grasp onto anything, right? It, it, it's basically balanced in both sides. And that's where we can, um, we can find peace within ourselves. But the fourth side is a whole different game. So the fourth side is basically the space or the table that's supporting the coin, right? Where's the coin existing? It must exist in some space, some, some dimension of reality. And this is the fourth, fifth, sixth. There's all these other dimensions that we don't see or we're not aware of that our eyes only see of, you know, a partial spectrum of uh, light. You know, we don't see ultraviolet light. And so we don't see this fourth side of the coin that exists. And this fourth side is where it's where the ego and the mind and our, you know, our experience of duality, it, it's a, the container for it all. And this is also who we are. You know, we, we are connected to everything. The consciousness that we are is in everything, every atom in this universe. There's no place that our consciousness doesn't exist. So being that the way that reality is, it's like, how can we drop into that? In, in you know without the mind so you have to actually drop the mind you have to first go into the third side of the coin which is the ego is just like okay i'm balanced with all that is i'm balanced with my past i'm balanced with my future i'm at peace with everyone in my past i'm at peace with everyone in my future and once you get to that place which can take a lot of time or just a lot of letting go then there's a natural effortlessness of just dropping deeper into yourself which is this spacious timeless space where it's like there's it's infinite it's our it's our soul it's our spirit we're connecting with our spiritual dimension our spiritual essence which is what wasn't taught to us in school right it was kind of illegal for you to find god within right and so this is the the next dimension for this world is to access this and to know this and so what we're doing here is is we're dropping the mind chatter and the the ego which is always wanting and craving and desiring for more. And if I get this, then I'll be happy. If I have this, you know, paradigm of thinking, then I'm going to arrive. Well, it's, yeah, it's always chasing something. But this is about letting go of all of that and just dropping inwards to this space, which is, is infinite. And this is the fourth side. So, I mean, you, the mind can't grasp infinity. You know, it only can, the mind is only able to, you know, hold on to these limitations. And so what we have to do is, is, you know, kind of break the mind free from all of its paradigms, which is not easy because we have to use the mind to transcend the mind. You know, we have to, we have to use some tool. 
and so this is um you know this is about quieting the mind you know bringing the mind to a place of absolute stillness and silence which is really the gateway to awakening to our spiritual awareness of who we are so it's interesting um you know you write you sorry my kitties are in love with you right now eh. um, my you you're your focus on making this accessible is what is so appealing to me because I feel like the third side that you spoke about is still got a touch of control, a little bit of force still, a little bit mm, of ego sure. in it where you're, you're balancing and there's this balancing act that is, um, I think, part of the mind, right? And so as we, as we live every day, there is a, sorry, kitties, there is a, um, an implicit message, I think, for most of us that it, we have to do. There's, we we got to go to work, we've got to pay our bills, we've got to, you know, take care of families and kitties, and, and there's things we have to do every day, and it keeps us mm -hmm. somewhere, and, and, and can you speak to the that space and how to first can we talk about the third side a little bit more no. yeah i mean the third side is still in the third dimension you know it's still part of the ego the fourth sides into the fourth and fifth dimensions so it's, it's making that bridge so the third side is you know the ego is yeah is trying to find peace it's trying to micromanage life and saying okay i can let go of this desire and this desire, and then I can connect with this desire in a way where I can find peace. You know, so because desire exists as part of our nature, it's a karmic kind of aspect that keeps us in this world and moving along. You know, there's nothing that's imperfect, like everything is absolutely perfect. It's just the mind creates these kind of configurations of belief that say, oh, this is right and this is wrong, this is good, this is bad. But you know, divinity just sees it all as just energy and consciousness and this play. And so this is the fourth side is just to see it from a very big perspective, you know, and it, uh, yeah, the third side is, um, yeah, it's the ego, you know, playing this balancing game, you know, and it's, it's a beautiful game to, if you can find peace in the third dimension, you will drop out into this higher expanded space where there's just a uh, absolute bliss well finding peace you know that's that's the, there's the rub right and i think yeah. <laughs> I mean, so i guess the that begs the question for me of of the how to's and you know we if we look at the third side and we we understand that the balancing act feels really good that when we're in this place, when we're in this place, we can feel really good is kind of what I'm getting from you, that it can be nice. Mm. Your mm. writing spoke of it being a great place to be and mm. that you, very few people get there um, without a lot of work, I think. And um, if we're in this, start, if we're on the third side, <clears throat> excuse me, then what's, what is it that we must let go of what, where's the teaching where's this mm. this path so we see yeah. this is easy to say i just want to let go or i want to be at peace what is the advice to move smoothly from two sides to three sides to four yeah so the first step would be to acknowledge that there is no doer okay that the, the mind the body think that they're doing this life you're doing these actions, you're, you're making these choices, but but really everything is predestined. Everything is, it's like billiard balls, like a billion billiard balls are like, you hit one and there's a exact configuration of how they are going to hit each other with the positions they are in. And it's gonna happen the exact perfect way every time that you hit this one ball, it's gonna go da, 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 and it's it's gonna do that every time. Exactly, so, so it's like there's billions of, you know, trillions and trillions of atoms or whatever that are in the universe that are constantly hitting each other, but it's all guided by a deeper force. And it's like, we're not the doer. 
You know, we think we are. We think we're separate from the divine. We think, we believe that we are separate, but we're really just, you know, a drop of water in the ocean. And it's this, this deep separateness, this individuated separateness that makes us experience suffering. But we need that suffering in order to experience freedom. We need the slavery in order to fe feel this sense of, you know, being free. So everything's perfect, right? The slavery that the world is in right now, you know, it has been chosen on a deep karmic level so that we could expand out of it, grow out of it into this place of knowing ourselves as the divine, the God source itself that can manifest anything. You know, that we don't need to live in these limitations. You know, I love the, the experiment of the fleas in the jar where they grew these fleas as babies into this little glass jar that was, you know, very small. And the fleas could only jump so high and they could only stay on the sides, right? And so as the, the fleas got to be adults, they removed the jar, but the fleas still stayed in that same jar-like configuration. They, 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 they kind of clung to what was thought to be a wall. And it just, it like amazes me, like how the mind can be so limited, you know, by its reality. And um, yeah, just yesterday I heard about these uh, multiple personality studies that were done. And one person who has several different personalities, one of the personalities has cancer. And they go to the doctor and they see the cancer cells. The next day, the, the other personality takes over who doesn't have cancer. They go to the doctor, there's no cancer. Unbelievable. Okay, so the, wow. the, the power of the mind is immense. The power of belief is immense. And um, there's so many different, you know, studies about there's there's hospitals where, you know, they people are chanting, you know, you're healed, you're healed, you're healed, and bringing this attention into you. And then all of a sudden, the tumor goes away. Yeah. You know, in three minutes. You know, so it's, there's there's so much proof that we can create reality and shapeshift reality based on our beliefs and what we think is real and what's not real. But, I mean, this is all part of the karmic play of life. You know, we are God manifesting reality with every thought we believe is true, right? So yeah. what we have to do is to, to drop into the stillness of that, the recognition of that, to, to surrender into, it's almost like the ultimate laziness. We have to kind of sit back so deeply into ourselves that we just it's like this bubbling up of the truth of who we are and stop reaching and running on the rat wheel for the next bit of cheese it's like a it's the opposite effect it's like okay i've done that enough i've reached outwards into the world enough i'm going to reach inwards and more like falling and surrendering inwards and that's where we find the peace we find the balancing that naturally happens, that you're not the doer. You don't have to try to balance things. Things are already in perfect balance. It's just that you don't believe that because the media is going to tell you it's not true. Right. You know, the media is going to say, oh, my God, the world's blowing up. Blah, blah, blah. Well, the truth is the world is perfectly balanced and spinning perfectly. And, and all the stars are aligned all the time. And you'll never get that message from anywhere out in the outer world. I mean, the, the media or whoever, it's like nobody's going to tell you that because they're not experiencing it for one. They don't believe it's true. And they don't know anybody, you know, who's living that reality. But that's how you know that you're on the fourth side of the coin. It's because when you actually know the truth, that everything is perfect exactly as it is, like to detail. And everything is guided by a force much bigger than the beings that you know are running this planet or the intergalactic beings that are you know taking care of our planet it's it's like it's so much bigger than we could imagine so we have to just surrender deeply to the you know the the spiritual truth of what we are and that's that's why we're here we're here for a spiritual awakening the whole planet we're moving from 3d to 4d to 5d and in that fifth dimension, you know, we will be a completely different species and we will sort of, we'll join the, uh, the intergalactic, you know, peaceful universe that exists. And, and so that's the, that's the whole play that's happening. 
you know, over this, uh, this sort of Armageddon kind of situation that the world is feeling right now. Like it's, it's like, uh, you know, and, and we have to have war to have peace. We have to have the duality. You know, this is the coin. It's, it's like we have to have both sides to know, you know, what's to live in this 3D world. So it's part of the play. It's it's a necessity, necessary evil, you know, to know what good is, to know what a saint is. You have to know what sinning is. It's it's all part of the play, but to not take it personally, to to realize that you know you are this spacious awareness that cannot be tainted. You know, it it never dies. Yeah. You know, and when the body's gone, you go to this amazing blissful ecstatic state of you know infinite consciousness and merging with all that is so it's a it's all a big you know joy ride really and once we know that and see that and you just you know listen to people who have died and come back to talk about it i mean there's thousands and you know children died and come back to talk about it and it's like they all have this very similar you know vibe you know just like wow it's just like so blissful so, so this is the, the fourth side. It's like the bridge to our true nature, which is, you know, the, the job that we're here to do is to access that in this body, embody it in this lifetime, right? To become Buddhas. You know, everyone is a Buddha in disguise. Everyone's a Christ in disguise. Everyone's a Mother Mary, a, you know, the highest beings, the Krishna, the, you know, whatever religion has dictated as like an awakened being, we are all that. Everyone is that. It's not that these guys are separate, you know, they're they're special. It's like we are all that. It's just that they have somehow released attachment to, you know, this side of the coin or that side of the coin, which was causing suffering. And they found the middle, the third side, and then they finally let go of that third side. And they're living from this other dimension. And from that other dimension, it's so easy to manifest whatever you want in this world, this world is like a toy that you can play with and you can create anything very quickly. And we're very magical. And this is what wasn't taught in schools, right? Because if they taught this in schools, they wouldn't have a workforce. They there wouldn't would have be anybody no to, Yeah, there would be no... <laughs> right? Right? So That's funny. Yeah. And, and it's like, we, you know, we have to be fed these lies in order to have this craving for the truth. You know, and it's like, thank you. Thank you for lying to me my whole childhood about what was true and what wasn't. And, and from that place, I can have this deep reverence and, and gratitude for when the truth hits me. It's like, oh, such a relief. Now I'm no longer confined to this lie that I've been living. And there's this, oh, this wonderful sense of like, you know, expansiveness and freedom. So, this is all part of the play, you know, the uh, the awakening play. So you got to be asleep to wake up, <laughs> you know. And then we go back and forth, right? We go back and forth in this process. So mm. some days I'm very awake and it's amazingly peaceful and I'm expanded and I feel so aware. And then somebody will say, did you see the war stuff? And these five people were killed and by this huge missile and it was in, and I'm like, uh, and then I just, I feel myself falling back to sleep and I feel the fear and the anger rising back up and the injustice of it all and the imbalance of it all. Mm. And so I guess the, the deep knowing is still there. Mm. Is it easy? Is it easy to wake back up? Like when we're in there, what's, what's your advice to trigger us back into awakened state what's the process like you you get you coach people to do this right yeah yeah i mean it's really about just getting the foundation of truth into your heart into your soul just get it embodied you know that there is no death for one nobody dies you know the body may come and go and it will come and go for thousands of lifetimes or whatever and those people who died in that war, they're probably right back into a body immediately. Like most people don't think about this, but as soon as you die, you're immediately back in a body. Immediately. Right? There's so many deaths and births happening all the time. 
and it's like they they want to they have these desires they die with these desires and it's like boom let's keep trying to get that desire let's try to keep working on waking up or, or becoming more self-realized so it's like so i don't know i i like i like to entertain this idea that you know that you go right back into the body immediately and i don't know if this is all for everyone but because of that one thought that we do immediately come back it makes people a little bit more aware of the thoughts and beliefs that they're choosing to hold on to you know and to stick to because guess what as soon as you die you're going to come back immediately as a baby with these same beliefs so what are you going to do and start over yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you're going to still over. hang on to these same beliefs so so why don't you let them go now right because you're just going to come instantly back because most people think oh i'm going to be in heaven for another 5,000 years and then I then maybe I'll come back to earth and maybe you know no it's like it's instant so so once that truth is kind of set in that nobody dies you know they immediately get reborn it's not such a you know it's not such a bad thing that they they get killed or whatever they maybe they needed to have a reboot you know and again there's no death so it's not like they got killed so it's just it's just you know once you see the once you're living from the fourth side you don't really take the the media and all the the crazy fear-based um inflections that it you know it puts on us as the truth right it's it's like you see that oh, okay this is the the dark comedy you know that is being pushed on me and it's horror like you know, it's Netflix horror. And it's just like horror and darkness 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 you know and it's like okay thank you you know thank you for showing me the dark side of the coin to my you belief know? system thank you for showing me to me right yeah where you're still holding on to a lie because at any time you're in pain or suffering it's because you're living in some belief system that is a lie it's not the full truth and so when these people die in this war it's like no they didn't die you know the person who's panicking they're living on one side of the coin is this like oh my god oh my god you know and it's like anytime someone's panicking you know for a fact that they're not seeing even all three sides of the coin they're just yeah. stuck on one side literally it's like driving a train on one track like how how you know would you go on a train that was balancing on one track the whole time right. no i mean you want both tracks and you want to this this the stability so it's like these people people are panicked you know and freaking out about whatever you know oh, there's a million things that people are freaking out about the detailed little things or the big things it's like okay that's triggering their fears and their belief system and the karma that they're here to move through and that's their stuff and it's like you don't have to buy into it and, and if it triggers you okay well then that's your stuff they helped you to see what you're still carrying and where you can detach you know and so detachment is the it's really the secret you know it's it's like how can we be really connected in our relationships and yet have a, a deep a sense of detachment as well because we have to be detached in order to be free and that uh it's tricky and that's you know relationships are the, the most challenging thing you know to really be intimate with someone and then not get hooked into their karma but again everything's perfect so it's it all works out as it's supposed to you know? <laughs> well and it's and that's easy to say and hear and think when we're not in the the fire right but yeah. what you're speaking of makes me think of and makes me want to pivot us just a slight bit to karma specifically and and the idea of um internal programming or what I call a box that I've built for myself that I've, I've built this little box in the quantum field and I think it's the mm. only field I think it's the only reality it's mm. life it's it's for sure life I am Republican or I am Democrat this is how we are and I call mm. it just programming but can can you speak to the programming relative to karma like how is one perpetuating or playing through the other or using the yeah, other I mean that's a really good question because they are definitely connected they're definitely relating and it's kind of like um 
you know, it's like the information from our programming is connected to what the karmic you know, lessons that we're here to learn. And also the karmic lessons are also creating the programming. So they're very interconnected. What The programming is more on the human level. The karma is more on a soul level, right? But there's there's always some place where they meet on the third side, you know? Right? So, so that's kind of, you know, the ticket. But the whole thing is that, you know, once you become self-realized or you're living on the fourth side, all that karma is gone. You don't, you're not carrying any karma anymore. Instantly, it's just erased because you, you are not you anymore as you see you to be. You are not this name, this body, this attachment to money or things, or you, know, you don't have any enemies or, or any, anything that would cause conflict. It doesn't exist because you realize this other dimension of your truth, your essence, your spiritual nature which isn't attached to anything in this world. It's not attached to anything because it knows that it's living on a whole different level. And it's like, okay, like it, we, we're not carrying that heaviness anymore. And that's why you, when you hang out with somebody who is living on the fourth side, it's like you feel so light and just like, oh, I'm just like floating through life. And it's like you start to feel what it's like to actually have no karma which is kind of this heaviness that we carry. We think, well, I've got to work through my karma. I've got to work on myself. I've got to fix myself. I've got all these problems, you know. And yeah, you, 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 know, you can work on yourself for thousands of lifetimes and still just make a little dent, you know, in this, this incredible, you know, thing that is called the ego mind consciousness or, what, you know, whatever we are, we think we are. So this belief of who we think we are. But really... There is so much more, you know, it's, <laughs> it's hard to put it into words, you know, but, but it's like, um, you know, the, there's like what you know, and then there's what you know that you don't know. I know I don't know much about whatever doctors and brain surgery, <laughs> brain surgery. I know yeah. I don't know that, but then there's the whole other section of the thing, which is, I don't know what I don't know. You know, I don't know that I don't know about this other thing that, I didn't even know existed. So there's that whole world of, and that's most of, that's like 99% is what we don't know, what we don't know. And this is like the fourth side. When you when you step into the unknown, and it's really terrifying for the ego to just, to live on this every day, but it's extremely exciting as well. You know? So it's like the fear and excitement. It's two sides of the same coin, yeah. you know? And so you don't know what you don't know. And it's like, how can you relax into that and find peace, you know, in this, the, the, the unknown, which is like the future. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, you know, next year or, yeah, even the next minute. We don't know what's going to come through. So it's like, how can we live in this anticipation, this excitement and this joy and this love and this trust, you know? And that's a trust is a huge word. It's like, yeah, that's the biggie, it's, isn't it? It's the biggie. Yeah. And I love doing this exercise with people is to check your trust valve. How open is your, your connection with trust with the universe? You know, check your heart on a scale of one to a hundred, you know, hundred being the most trust. I trust the universe. I trust myself. I trust everything is working out perfectly. Where am I on that trust level? Mm. Mm. You know, even right now. Powerful. You say, okay, maybe I'm 70, 80, 90, right? Or maybe I'm 50, 40, or 30, whatever. But how can you turn up the trust dial, right? What can you do to just increase the amount of trust by opening the heart to trust, imagining more and more trust going into your system and trusting life more and more until you reach that 100% trust level? And if you can lock it in at 100% trust and just live and breathe from that place of just surrendering and trusting that everything is as it should be and everything is working out perfectly and you are just, you know, a, a player on the stage of life, you know, you're, you're just a leaf kind of in some way just floating down the river and life is carrying you, you know, into the ocean. And it's this blissful ending you know when we we exit the body we go into this blissful state so it's, 
it's like we have nothing really to worry about you're going to be carried into this this state of ecstasy no matter what yeah and we just trust the river is guiding us towards the right people and the right places and the right things and yeah we get the the idea the illusion of free will along the way that we can make choices but really it's like you know they're they're kind of being made through us you know i do there's this is the big three you know the big three there's uh, the free will and predestination is another opposites and how can we find the middle path between free will and predestination so everything's predestined and no no i have total choice over my reality Paradox each moment i can choose that's crazy yeah yeah it blows the mind but how can we find the middle path between free will and predestination and when you find that third side that's a big one where it just shifts so many dimensions of the ego's need to control reality you know to be in charge and you get to this place of real surrender and i think that's one of the big golden tickets to dropping out from the fourth side is to to let go of your free will and to let go of predestination to let go of both and to know they're both true but they're also both they cancel each other out you know like everything in duality yeah. you know we'll cancel each other out once you see that you're on the edge of the coin you can see both sides and you're like you drop away and you're into the fourth side so, so the energy the the energy system though that we're talking about as part of the program is very convincing that that i have this energy that i have these fears that i have this resistance in my body you know then i'm sure many and i have clients that feel this that they're very convinced about these certain sides of the coin that they're on yeah sure as we talk about getting to the middle and as you you know address the idea of letting go and, and just kind of being in the middle of or standing on top of the paradox or what i call surfing the paradox that we're mm. we're kind mm. of just playing with it now and mm. but when we get into that state it's it, it feels accomplished it feels amazing because we're in nothing right you're describing mm. this nothing space of not knowing of just being accepting of what is of isness mm. and the programming though as we as we move more consistently in that space does it just fall away does the karma just or the 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 energy systems that we've built up over time that kind of to me look like an onion or a mandala some type mm. of twisted um series of um belief patterns that mm. we kind of fall into from one day to the next in a repeated fashion <laughs> over mm. and over where you're experiencing the same thing is there a you know the the course of miracles talks about um purification process that there must be a purification and mm. and so and i've experienced as well as i as i meditate more and as i step more into my into that trusting open space as i sit back into my spine and i let go of the need to charge forth into control i do feel the pain of letting go so i feel the tears will come up or the anger will come out of me and that kind of thing mm. is there is there a process that you're describing that doesn't require the purification in terms of feeling the karma as it comes out and it's transformed or what is the, the what are the steps that you can describe well i mean it is helpful to go through the purification of course course it's going to be much easier to transcend duality when you're fasting or cleansing you know you're in a constant state of presence and awareness and a meditative connection so it is yes yeah, absolutely helpful but also it's it's not dependent on that right it's it's really the realization of the truth when we just penetrate through the mind to the truth of reality which is really hard because yeah it's so thick and there's so much conditioning and so much programming that we're living behind in the layers and layers and layers <laughs> yeah. yeah we're wearing it but the thing is is it's like where are we fighting it where are we thinking it's wrong you know who's who's thinking that it's wrong to have conditioning you know 
everybody has conditioning. Even Jesus and all the masters, they all had conditioning. Everyone has conditioning. That's there's nothing wrong with that. Right? What's 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 not necessarily wrong, but what's challenging is when we fight it. It's when we create the conflict within ourselves and saying, like, okay, if I can just be more pure, then I'm gonna reach this saintly, you know, hood, then I'm gonna reach this higher dimension. But you already are that. <laughs> you see? <laughs> you already are that. And right. once you once you accept that, you just you go there and you're like, I am that. And then and then you just accept, you just it's a deep acceptance. You know, that's why, you know, you hear these masters, they go out into nature for 40 days, 40 nights, and just really go inside and really find this deep truth. It's like, and they fast and they, they cleanse, and it's like, you get into this deep truth of, okay, I am that. And you are that. It's, you can't, you can't, we can't deny that. You are that, what you're seeking. You're already that. And once you relax into that, you're like, okay. I can, and then, then the conditioning just, you know, like you said, the onion just naturally falls away. The, the layers just kind of naturally, they're not so important. They may still be there, but it's like, I don't have to believe that I have a challenge, you know, with my cats or my whatever, or whatever. It's like, it's like they are perfect sitting in front of the screen and walking around. And that's just what they are. And it's like, it's okay. And it, you know, the conditioning, it doesn't have this pull so much it's like you can actually enjoy it it's like yes i'm so thankful that i had you know whatever that childhood experience was and even traumas we can be thankful for traumas because they actually like push us towards this deeper healing experience so conditioning is is part of the game and it's also beautiful it's not something there's nothing wrong with it you know it's like is the is the skin of the apple wrong you know, it holds the, the the precious, you know, as soon as you take out the skin, it goes brown. Yeah. It's like, as soon as you remove your conditioning, it's like, oh, it's like, there's a, there's a sense of loss. It's like, who am I? I don't know. I don't know well, who I there am. is, right? So there's the grief, right? The, the, the grief that I think that I think surrounds the heart. And I feel mm. like um, <clears throat> that can apparently disappear if I shift my personality, <laughs> but yeah. it, so I kind of see it as I've been a frog that has been in the pot of cool water that's we, that, you know, my programming started to turn up and it kept mm. turning up the heat. And so I've just been this boiling frog, not knowing that it was boiling, but I have, it's become normal for me to, yeah. to die a slow death, a painful slow death, right? So it's just, I think that um, Jesus spoke of forgiveness mm. and, and um, the Buddha spoke of um, unattachment, or I guess detachment, right? Mm -hmm. Unattaching mm -hmm. from, from these programs. And I think, you know, my upbringing as a Christian was more around um, martyrdom and speaking from the false sense of, of um, forgiveness. Mm -hmm. That there's something to forgive mm -hmm. and that I'm separate from that that I have to forgive. Mm, and so yeah. when you speak of shifting into this new mindset or changing your state, right? I'm just going to call it changing your state. When you just decide mm. I'm going to change my state and I'm going to be the thing that I know that I am. Can you speak to separation versus unity consciousness in that respect? Where, where are we? relative to other people who may or may not want to have anything to do with these these types of thoughts yeah i mean i'm trying to grasp your question <laughs> a well, little so, bit yeah so it's a if we if we're to forgive it was a mm -hmm. multifaceted kind of process here in my brain so if, mm -hmm. if we are to forgive others if we're to forgive our upbringing, if we are to release it, in other words, to mm. have it be debt free. Thank you for mm -hmm. being here in my life. Thank mm. you for showing up and, and showing me to me. Thank mm. you for pushing me to my love and to yeah. my heart. I mean, all forgiveness is self forgiveness. Okay. So that's where I'm, I, I'm feeling this kind of gap in my mind between being in that state and then watching still a mother that brought you up i'm 
I've had to do work with my mom and I'm in a really good place, but you know, it mm. took a while to, for me to kind of unravel that we're not separate. Mm. And, and so being in this unity place, can you speak to being in unity relative to okay. all this? I see. So, yeah, so all forgiveness is self forgiveness. So if you forgive yourself for whatever happened in your childhood, like you're releasing whatever happened you know, in the outer world as well. You're, you're forgiving them, the past self and the present self and the future self of who this outer person is, which is also an aspect of you. Like everyone is you in disguise. When you're on the fourth side, you see that. You actually know that, that everyone's your mirror reflecting the God self back to you. So every time you talk to somebody, it's God talking back to you, right? So there is only one self, and this is the ultimate truth. Like this is like the highest truth, but you can't really say there's just one one self because one implies two, right? There's just the self, right? And the self is everything. It's God. It's consciousness. It's an everything. And so once you come down to that understanding, that truth, that annihilates, you know, all other paradigms of thought. Right, completely. There's just one self or just the self. So then then it's like, okay, yeah, I forgive myself, you know, for whatever happened. I did this to me, or they did this, I did this to them. You know, it's just a play of karma working itself out. And then so again, we don't know how many lifetimes that we've been playing this back and forth. Like how many times that your mother did this to you and then you did this to your mother. And right. I mean, who knows, right? So if you see that, you're like, okay, this is just one little tiny, you know, sliver of the, the movie. We're watching one frame of this long, long, long movie. And it's okay. This is this is not the whole movie. But see, once you step onto the fourth side and you get a glimpse, just a glimpse of the whole movie, you're like, oh, I get it. Like, that's me being hard on me again. That's me hating myself again. That's me shooting on me again. <laughs> shitting <laughs> yeah shitting on me again <gasps> yeah and it's it's like okay this is the karmic pattern this is the heaviness that we carry is this should this debt you debt. know that it <gasps> needs to be paid Jeez. off yes. yeah wow that's beautiful mm. should is debt and it's only yeah. a debt from me to me yeah oh that i've wound up and and be made true into this little story yeah and so i've formed a personality we form personalities right that that are based on all these debts if you will yeah, yeah. These subconscious debts so i guess really really kind of as we kind of come full circle as we understand who we really are the subconscious kind of is not a thing. Is that possible? I mean, yeah, there's still like, you know, in impressions, you know, like they call them some scars that are just these deep, deep impressions of the, the karma that comes through. I mean, it's until we are fully self-realized, until you are living, walking, breathing 24 seven, knowing there's only one self. There's only the self that isn't everything, everyone, until you realize that you are God being reflected in everything. There's no separation between you and God. Until that happens, yeah, there's going to be this, these impressions from the subconscious, these uh, uh, thoughts bubbling up, believing that I'm separate or that I'm less than or I'm more than. I have a problem that needs to be solved. They have a problem that needs to be solved. The world has a problem that needs to be solved. Like these are all these very third dimensional, you know, living in duality, right? And it's, I mean, this is huge. I mean, it's the biggest, you know, thing that a human being could even imagine tackling is is waking up, you know, and that's why we get glimpses of it. It's like, oh, okay. And that's so big, this one little glimpse, but imagining living in that glimpse for hours and days and weeks and months and years, it's like, it's it keeps expanding our sense of reality so there's it's an infinite playground and you help people do this 
but yeah for wherever they are in their journey sure like it, that's that's all i've ever done is like you know work with people where they are at in their karma and their relationships with their money and, and their health and you know so that they can live a, a life that's just free from suffering and you know to penetrate through all the negative beliefs you know is you know it's maybe that's where they need you know and it's just i just feel into each person what they need for that moment of their life and then we work from there and then it's it's a very kind of you know twisty turny ride we have no idea what's going to happen next but but it's like you know there's something higher guiding us all their high talk to their higher self my higher self it's like okay where does this person need to go today to reach one step closer to their freedom so the freedom yeah. is it based on and and not to back pedal too much but is it based on um a blueprint like that you mentioned that you can uh, kind of help people with their um um akashic records and or you can tap into their akashic records if they if they want and if, so is there a blueprint relative to these records and can we help to can we shift that blueprint we're yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, and I ask, you know, what does this person most need to know? And I mean, the Akashic Records is the information of all space and all time. It's kind of like the mind of God and all information is in there that has ever happened in the universe. So it's a very huge <laughs> database of information, which we all have access to. And, but it's not that like, there's, there's certain pieces of information that are helpful and some are not helpful, you know. So it's like you just ask for the most helpful information and for the highest good of all concerned. And then, you know, working with that on that level and that that can be helpful. And sometimes the records, you know, somebody's so attached to the records and they, oh, I need to know what's going to happen to me next year. And, da, 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 and I'm in this court case and I'm going to, am I going to win? And, and sometimes the records are like this person, you cannot give them any information because they're just going to get attached and it's going to really create more suffering. So the records are like, no, we can't give you this information yet. It's not, they're not ready yet. You know, so it's like, okay, what, you know, you can, what can you do? You can just but, work with them where they're at. And, and then, so you work with them where they are. <clears throat> and then I guess if that's the polar opposite, if there is an opposite to the fourth side, <laughs> that's, that's everything, you know, needing to there know. Isn't. There's right. no opposite. <laughs> so the that, I guess there's my answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause you're out of duality, you know? Yeah. It's like if you if you expand into outer space, like there's infinity above us, below us, and left and right. There's infinity. Right now, there's infinity in every direction. Right? If you expand into all the infinity in the universe, is there an opposite to that? Some people say there's a multiverse, right? Okay, there's some sphere of the the universe and that there's other universes, right? But then how do you say that those aren't also connected? How do you think that, you know, think anything separate? So, you know, there's no opposite really to the fourth side. It's like, um, it just steps beyond duality, which is duality is the only opposites. And that's how we can, talk and have this conversation this is like there's a separate body talking to the separate body and you know and then we can play we can learn and grow and there's a sense of dimension you know but when you're in heaven it's you're all one and there's no <laughs> there's no opposite well and so interaction right um if we're if we're interacting at work we go to work mm -hmm. and we do we're doing this work internally and we're on our own kind of internal path and we live in an external very dual space we, we get our money from that space or you know and I do that as well I have a job and they go into this space where I don't know what people are thinking I don't know where they are um, in terms of um, duality or unity and Yet there are things that we have to do. There are contracts that need to be signed. There are deals that need to be done. And I'm working with other people that don't have the same unity conscious focus as I do, I, it seems. I can't mm. speak specifically, but mm. it just seems like it. 
what is the advice to um, stay in the fourth? Is there a tip or a trick you can leave us with for staying in this fourth side spaciousness mm. while we're in this world interacting with people as opposed to running off to a cave, which I would love to do. If you've got a cave that will pay me <laughs> and feed me, I would oh. love to do that. I mean, the cave is already inside of you right now. Oh. Right? You can just drop into this place of being at peace or everything is okay as it is. The cave is here. You don't have to leave your job to go somewhere else to find peace somewhere else. You could, it's just an inward journey. Right? And the tip, the golden secret here that you're looking for is within this the framework of the I. And you say, I have a job. I have to go to work. I, 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 I. So, so immediately you're creating a limitation. I am this, I have this responsibility, right? Versus, you know, when you're in the fourth side, it's like, yeah, there is no doer. It, the body is doing its thing. And I am just sitting back and enjoying the ride. I am not this body. I'm not doing this. It's just doing things. It's, it's walking, it's speaking, it's working, it's getting money. It's, it's doing its thing, right? Yeah, I'm just I'm just in the back seat of the limo going, wow, this is such a cool ride. Let's, you know, see where we're gonna go today. You know, like it's just there's more of a relaxed enjoyment of the ride because you know that you're not the doer. You know you are not this I thought that attaches to everything. The the real I thought doesn't it can't be attached to anything. So again, it comes to this level of attachment, right? And so you just watch your language, you know, anytime you use the word I, notice what follows. This is ego, all ego. This is this con compounded place of duality, you know, where you're creating a polar polarity in your reality. Like it's, I have to work with these people, you know, these other people. Well, there's oneself. It's just, you know, oneself playing out these roles with these appearing appearing to be something separate than you you know it's, it's it's really hard to describe but it's it's a matter of just um you know paradigm shifting into a more spiritual dimension of your work and it doesn't matter really if these people are spiritual or not if they get it or not it really doesn't matter when you're living in this other realm that you're not the doer you don't have to tell them that they'll never they'll think you're crazy right but you can just you can just live in this place of like relaxed effortless you know joy of just the bliss of your being and just be like the body's going to do what it's going to do the contracts are going to go the way they need to go everything's going to play out according to higher plan and purpose and i'm just here to really learn how to just relax and enjoy the ride and let it all play out. And just notice, where does your ego get attached? The, I want to win the case, and I don't want to lose, you know? It's like, okay, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, whatever. Right. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter who wins or loses. Like, the real winner is the one who is free in each moment from all suffering. Mm -hmm. Right? So it doesn't matter if that's the greatest winner. If someone loses the game and they're super happy, that's even more of a winner. Yeah. You know, they're like, it's okay. It's totally okay to lose. Who loses? You know, you ask yourself the question, you know, who, who is this that is losing or winning and, you know, getting it right or getting it wrong? And just, yeah, it's, it's the ego. So to identify the ego, you identify the third side of the coin then you can become free you know that's huge he is huge he is so huge and this is what humanity's moving towards is this greater awakening and it's gonna become viral in a bit you know it's gonna like start to spiral out because people are needing this people are craving some, some sort of freedom people are like oh i've been suffering for so long help help me find right. Yeah, and there's no other way to turn. It's like, where do we go? And they try out this, you know, this food, this formula, this diet, this pill, this, this psychologist, this belief system. You know, I got to fix myself and da, 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 there's something wrong with me. And let me release my pains. You know, it's like, 
okay see how that goes does it work are you free are you really free well if you're not completely free it's not working you know this is the only thing i've ever found that works well, and that speaks to the thing that you said in your writing, which is, you know, reflective of that scene in the Matrix where Neo is with is going to visit the Oracle and he, he, he uh, interacts with this young little Buddha child who reminds him or teaches him in that moment that there is no spoon. And that if you haven't mm -hmm. seen the movie, then highly recommend it. it is yeah. that where you're speaking of this point? Yeah, yeah exactly. There is no spoon. And really, when you get down to it, there is no ego. You know, it's just the mind creating these ideas of who we are. And like, like where do those exist? You know, so yeah. it's, a, it's a big, you know, mess of the mind. Like, it's like it messes with your mind so deeply that you're just like, oh, I just surrender. And that's what we want. You know, we want the mind to give up yeah, trying to figure it out. <laughs> Because it's too big for the mind. The mind is too small of a container to, to hold the, the grand truth of, you know, infinity and existence. It's, so it's just like, oh, I just surrender. Well, I can't. And then there, and this, yeah, and then surrender is freedom. So that's it. I can't thank Especially. you enough for that message because mm -hmm. um, I think the writing spoke to that, um, that the fourth side, the path was the, the path of surrender. And the path mm. of letting go of what we think we are and what we think we know. And mm. I feel like that is the big kahuna. That's the big message. And and I can't mm. thank you enough for being here with everyone and sharing mm. this. And um, and I invite and I will put all of your information um, in, in the note section. And, and I'll invite anyone who is inclined to continue to further their practice to reach out to you at your site. And, um, and I just want to thank you so much for your time. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Happy you have, to help. Do you have anything going job. on? Do you have anything <laughs> going on? That, anything that you want to promote? I mean, I have a, a free um, 5D manifesting training course that I give out that I love for people to experience. And they get the first chapter of the manifesting manual, which is, it's really about awakening. I mean, it's like called the manifesting manual, but it really is about how to wake up and um yeah that's it manifestingmagnet.com um you can get the free um course and enlightened beings is the main website enlightenedbeings.com is the main website so that's just a huge vortex of everything you want <laughs> no, I love it. to know i'm still listening to my <laughs> my um recordings your mp3s that i bought i love them yeah. <laughs> really good stuff that have helped me and i think that what i got a lot of, out of that is the the resonance the energy of your voice the energy of your mm. intention it really mm. is helping to kind of coalesce things for me and help me to feel more trusting it does help mm. me so mm. thank you for that Beautiful. coach yeah. all right well we will talk soon and um, yeah. i wish you the best and i send blessings to you and your mm. and, uh, family your growing mm. family and thank peace you. be with you and all Thank you. Wow. I will stop Beautiful. the recording. Yeah. Um, <laughs>